Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. This time, we will talk about the render settings in Blender 3.0 version, and give you some tips on how to optimize your render time. I will also mention couple of important points that might change your render process, so keep watching and let us roll. We will be working on this interior scene that we made before, so if you want to learn how we did it, the link is in the description. First thing you will encounter is the render engine, and as wonderful as Evi, Cycles is more useful with interior scenes, and we did make a tutorial on Evi a while back in the channel, so let us change it here to Cycles, once you do that, two extra options will appear. The feature set is nothing to worry about as long as it says supported, like in my case, or experimental if you're using old or alpha blender version, the second option is to choose whether you render with your graphic card or not, that means you either leave it on CPU or change it to GPU, and this depend on your device if the graphic card is good or not, however, generally speaking, any mid-level graphic card can beat the CPU in render, so if you have the option, always put it on GPU. Now we jump into the sampling area, let me just say that from here on, more in options means more in render times. Just to put it out there, so, the sampling area, it has three sub tabs, first one is the viewport, this will control the samples in the viewport render, so by the time you finish your scene, you won't need it in the final render, let me close it so we don't get confused, the second one is the render samples, in this one, we can change the samples number for the image we want to generate, and that means Blender will give each pixel the number you identify here to correctly generate its color or shape, which also relates to both lights and noise which you don't need to major in right now, you just need to know that more samples means more clear image with extra render time. Over the samples count there's an option called noise threshold, enable it, what this do is tell Blender the amount of noise to process for, so with this one, the less the number the more process Blender need to do, and in result more time to finish, which I found not that much, I did experiment with it a bit and the render time still the same whether you leave it on 0.01 or even put it on half that value, so for me, I just leave it on the default value which work fine most of the times. This last option is to limit your render time to a specific minutes, no one do that, so just leave it on zero. The denoising process is more useful than you think, this allows you to use less samples and produce good quality images with no time. In this sub tab, we can select the process type which entirely depends on the device you chose, so if you have a GPU card and it happens to be Nvidia, just select optics this one made for it, if you went with CPU, the open image option is the one you should select, the old version did come with extra option called NLM, but it seems like they deleted it for some reason, and for the passes, leave them on the default option, in the sampling third sub tab, we have the light threshold, this value can go from 0.2 to half the default value, and can also affect your render time if you exaggerate with it, I did make a test with two values just to see the time differences, and here it is, as you see there is quite the time saving and that's for 200 samples, this time will increase once we do 800 sample or more so you might do a test first to know the right value which can save you quite the time. The light path section have couple important options, first is the light bounces, now as we said before, more means more. Increasing those number will give Blender more time to process each aspect and that will increase the render time, I do recommend doing an 8 value for both the diffuse and the glossy and 12 for the transparency for scenes like this, or just leave it on default if you want fast render, we did explain those max bounces with experimentation in my daylight lighting tutorial, so go watch it for more info on that. 
The other thing we need to worry about in the light paths is the coarse ticks, this one is an important option, we often use it with glass and transparency, like in this scene, if we render this without the coarse ticks on, the result will be something like this, where if we turn both the reflection and refraction for the coarse ticks, we will have much better result but with much more time in render, caustics can add up to extra 20% to your render time, so if you're rendering abstract scenes with solids, environments or anything that don't have glass materials in it, leave this option off. The fast GI approximation, by the description it clearly says it will give you bad quality, so I don't know why I tried it, but it really deliver, less time with bad quality. The next tabs are not important in interiors, the volume can be used if you want some dust volumetric or god rays, and for sure volume will increase the render time by a lot. The performance tab can help you switch from progressive type render to bucket, so here we enable the tiles, set the size, and render it to see that it render with one tile at the times, and I do think progressive is more useful in the way that you can see if there's any mistake before you wait the entire render time. The last tab you can check is the color management, not a fan of it. I do like doing my post render process with third party program, but you can experiment with it before any render, final thing we can adjust is the resolution, by default it's set to 1080, we can set it here on 200% which make it 4K and will take double the time to render, that's it for the render settings, so before we wrap this video, couple of things you need to pay attention to, both of them play major roles in your render process, first one is your device, I know it's stupidly obvious but people keep forgetting that, your machine specifics is the main key to say if your render process smooth or not, so if you want a better render experiment, consider updating your hardware. The second one is update your blender version, blender 3.0 have quite the advantage in render comparing to the older versions. One extra thing I forget to mention is the samples render. Normally in interiors scene we need a clear image with extra 50% zoom, so a number between 800 and a 1000 should be enough, now if you want to show any of the objects in the back, and you don't know how much more samples you need to add, in this case you need to experiment with it, using Ctrl B we can select a specific area to render, and experiment with the samples count until you reach a good results. And that's all we have for today guys, stay sharp, goodbye.